Hello, beautiful internet family. My name is Dan Davis, and I'm the creative director here at danstube.tv, as well as the Fearless Drone Academy, which is the ultimate online drone course for beginners. And in today's video, I've got a special one, something that is not spoken about enough, and something that seems to affect way too many drone pilots out there, and it's how to operate a drone in high winds. Now this is something that I see way too many videos on YouTube of people losing their drone because they didn't accommodate for the wind, or they didn't even prepare for different wind conditions, or even know what to do in that situation where there is a lot of wind. You know, they just launched their drone, flew away, and then didn't even think about it, and then they couldn't return their drone, or they had issues with the wind combating their drone's flight. It happens all the time, and I see way too many videos online of people screwing this up, really. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to operate your drone in high winds. The first thing you want to do is go onto your phone, computer, whatever you have access to, and just search for the drone that you own. So I just recently got the Mini 3 Pro. So I'm just gonna type in Mini 3 Pro to Google. I'm gonna to go to the DJI official page. So we wanna make sure it's coming from the source, depending on what drone you have. Again, like if you've got a different branded drone, go to their official page. Now, when you're on that page, you want to then click on the arrow, depending on you know, what you're on, whether it's phone or desktop, it will look different. But you basically wanna find the section that says specs. Now, when you click on specs, it will bring up all the specs that you need to know. And as you scroll down, you will find the max wind speed resistance. So that's what you need to look out for, max wind speed resistance. And that's where you're gonna get the most up-to-date, relevant information from the official like company that creates the drone. So for the Mini 3 Pro, for example, I can see that it can handle up to a level five uh, wind rating, which is 10.7 meters per second. So that's the first thing you wanna know. It's really important to document this or just keep it in the old memory bank, depending on how your memory goes. Write it down though, if you can, and then you actually have an official rating of what your drone can handle. Now what you can do next is you wanna download two apps. Now you don't necessarily need both of them. I find it helpful to have as much information as possible, but the first app you wanna get is called Wind Compass. The thing I love about the Wind Compass app is it's just a really easy way for me to turn my phone and see which direction the wind is actually coming from, because that's one of the most important things to know, especially when your drone's going to be returning back to you. That'll be a point I'll get into very soon. But again, go back into your settings, and then you can see here there's an option, wind arrow direction. So you can either set it up as blowing to, so the wind is blowing in that direction, or the wind is coming from. So I like coming from, which seems to be the default one when you get uh, the application. So that means that the wind is coming from that direction. So if I turn the compass, I can then see which way the wind is coming from. I also get those ratings there which say 1.6 meter per second winds and then 2.8 meter per second gust. So that's another really important thing to keep an eye on because gust speed, again, is a worry. A lot of people just look at wind speed, but it's also good to know what the variance will be. You know, if there's some heavy gusts out there that might be over the wind rating that your drone can fly in, really good to know about that and check that before you leave for that location or you know if you're at the location already just load up the wind compass app and just see what the speeds of the actual wind and the gusts are as well as the direction that the wind is coming from just on wind direction i think that sometimes it can get a little confusing when you you know look at the actual settings and it says wind arrow direction blowing to or coming from sometimes that can be a little confusing and you know it's cool to look at this at a glance but until you get used to it um, another thing that i would recommend is Wherever you are, just pick up leaves or sand or dirt or whatever you can and just throw it into the air and see which way the wind actually takes it. That's a really good indication of where the wind is coming from. And that will also be a great way to confirm that this is the correct direction. And that's also another good test. Um, so then when you're changing between blowing to and coming from, you can actually then see you know, exactly where it's coming from in a physical sense as well as a digital sense. Just to make sure that you're not getting confused or mixed up, you then know 100% which way the wind direction is coming from. The second app that I'd recommend is, again, a very handy one that has a bunch of other features. It's called UAV Forecast, and this gives you a lot of options. The first thing, though, that we wanna see here is we wanna go straight down to Wind Profile. 
Now this gives us an idea of what the wind conditions are gonna be in different altitudes. So as you can imagine, like if you're in a sheltered area with a lot of trees, your drone's just hovering here, you're probably thinking, oh, it's not moving much, you know, it must be fine. But then straight when you go above the tree line, you're gonna see potentially, unless you just fly away, you'll see your drone moving a little bit more because it's above that tree line and it's not sheltered. So this application gives you just an example of like what wind speed and gust speed looks like um, at different altitudes. So this is just another nice visual and it's good to like check on here as well as the wind compass just to confirm that everything is you know 100% and that it hasn't accidentally got location wrong or that it's you know not up to date or there's something wrong going on like a bug in the application. It's always nice to have the two applications and just check them before you start flying. I do have a really cool free resource that you can get from the Fearless Drone Academy's website. If you just go over there, scroll down and find the newsletter section, sign up for that, then you'll actually receive the pre-flight checklist that is exclusive to the Fearless Drone Academy, but it's a free resource when you sign up to that newsletter. So that could be a really good thing to do. Then you can write the wind speed in the top corner. You can maybe put like the wind direction as well. So you've then got everything set up for each flight on just one printout, and then then gives you a chance to then go through and check everything off to make sure that you're ready to fly. So you've now figured out the wind rating that your drone can handle. You've checked on the two apps, you've checked the UAV forecast and the wind compass application. You're now out on the field, ready to fly your drone. And then once it is all set up and ready to go, before you even start flying away to a new location or even thinking about getting videos or photos, especially if it is a relatively windy day, because this is all about high wind speeds. And I see, again, way too many people flying in crazy conditions and not being prepared. So what you wanna do is once your drone is set up, you wanna launch it and you just wanna monitor it. You wanna monitor the behavior of the drone. Now, depending again on the wind speed or the gust speed, you will see your drone moving around a fair bit because it's trying to counter all that wind that's hitting it. So you just wanna check and make sure that it actually is still holding the same position. Sometimes what can happen if it's really, really windy, you'll find the drone will start drifting a little bit. So you wanna make sure that it's at least staying in the same kind of position. And now monitor it for any sort of weird sounds that sound a little bit odd, or if you're hearing that it's just really struggling and you're noticing it's erratically moving up and down, back and forth, side to side, and it can't hold its position, that could be a good indicator that it's actually just not worth flying. Because that's another thing that I'll get onto soon. Like, if the wind is not favorable, and if it's way too crazy, there is just an option to not fly. That's the best option if the wind conditions are unpredictable. Just keep your drone safe and wait for a different day. Now that you've had the drone hovering for a couple of minutes, just to see how it's behaving, you then wanna make sure that as you're putting inputs into the controller, so as you're turning right and left, and as you're going up and down, make sure that the drone is responding to the controller as you would expect it to. And even flying side to side or back and forth, that will give you an indicator of how the drone's going to perform with the wind. So again, remember we're in potentially like a secluded spot. You might be you know, surrounded by trees or something. So it's not going to be as realistic as when you get up above the tree line, but it at least shows you how the drone is going to handle the wind. And also, so you have some awareness around how the drone will actually control with different conditions. And now the next thing I would recommend is literally just launching the drone up. So again, if you're in an area where there's lots of trees, just launch it up above the tree line. But while it's there hovering, make sure to monitor it. Again, a lot of people, they just fly away without even checking how the drone's performing, potentially in some crazy wind conditions. They just go, yeah, the drone will be fine, just send it off, which is insane to me because you're not even prepared for you know, the worst case scenario. So you wanna launch above the tree line and just again, hover and monitor the behavior of the drone. See how it's going, see if it's holding its position. Again, this is a really good indicator if it starts drifting and you notice the drone just drifting off to one side, it could be too windy for the drone. So in that situation, if you have a gut instinct that the drone's just drifting off and you're noticing it getting close to trees and you're getting a bit nervous, maybe it's not worth flying, especially if it's getting close to what the wind rating is. So with the Mini 3 Pro, it was what? Um, 10.7 meters per second. If the wind speed is, let's say eight meters per second, but the gust speed is 10 meters per second, like you're bordering on some very dangerous conditions there that the drone might not be able to handle. So it could just be worth not even bothering and just waiting. Because you can keep checking the app, 
and seeing the like updated information and the wind speeds might start to come down. It's just worth not flying in those kind of situations, especially if you're feeling really nervous. So now that you've decided that it's okay to fly, if you've checked everything and you're like, yeah, I still think I'm ready to fly the drone. You've launched it up. It seems to be fine above the tree line. Then really what you want to test then is depending on the wind direction, you want to fly the drone towards the wind and then turn around and then fly with the wind. Now you want to get used to this because as I'm going to get onto next, wind direction is really crucial here, especially if battery life is getting low and you're trying to fly directly against some strong wind. The drone's going to take a lot longer to get back to you. And especially some of these mini drones, like this is the mini SE, it might not be able to battle that wind. And by the time it gets back to you, the battery might not have enough juice and it could just, you know, fall out of the sky or have like a, a forced landing potentially. So you do not want that to happen at all. So you want to make sure that you know what the drone is like directly against the wind, even like take a note of how fast it can go against the wind uh, with the controller, switch it into sports mode. Again, see how fast it can go against the wind and then test it going with the wind. So again, with your going with the wind, you're going to be going a lot faster. And ideally, when you want to return the drone, you want to be using the wind to push you back to where you can actually land the drone. So this is the Mini SE controller. It doesn't actually have like a little toggle or a switch to go between the different flight modes, but you also want to test sports mode because you want to get used to, you know, in those situations where you need to get the drone back and maybe you've left it just a little too long, um, you need to know what it's like to switch into sports mode and then use the wind to propel you back to that spot that you want to land in. So test again with the sports mode, what the drone's like flying against the wind and then with the wind. Again, take a, a reading, write down how fast it's actually flying. So you have a sense of, you know, how long it's roughly going to take you to fly back to the location you want to land in. The next tip is something that people do not do enough of, and it's just monitoring the battery life. Like it sounds like such an obvious one, but again, I've seen a lot of videos online of people flying their drone out over a coastline or out into the middle of wherever, and there's so much wind hitting that drone. So then as they try to fly back, they just physically don't have the battery life. So it forces the drone to try to land in either the water or the middle of like a bush or a jungle or wherever they're flying. It's just ridiculous because if you're prepared for that, you know what it's like, how long it's going to take to actually fly back to your location, how the drone's going to perform. And if you're well and truly prepared for these situations, then you don't have to worry about it at all because you're going to be aware that it takes roughly, you know, this long to get back to me if I'm flying with the wind. And for example, if you're flying against the wind, which is fine, you just need to make sure that you've got enough battery life on the controller. You're checking the controller battery life as well as obviously the drone's battery life and making sure that you've got enough time to get you back. Again, it all comes down to those early stages of preparing yourself, knowing how fast the drone can fly against the wind in sports mode and in normal mode, and to see if there's a way that you can start flying over the other direction, for example, so that when you're ready to return, you're then using the power of the wind to send you back. So what you can do is maybe you can fly for half of the battery over here when the wind's blowing on the drone, and then for a portion of your flight, you wanna fly back to the other side. So then when you're ready to return, you're then again using that wind to blow you back so that you can just land nice and close. And that's basically everything you need to know to ensure that you're not gonna have any issues with the wind. And it's exactly how you can operate a drone in high winds. If the winds are too high, do not bother at all. Just make sure that you, you know, go home and compose yourself and then come back later on. Keep checking the apps if the wind goes down or just leave it for the next day. Again, one flight, I'm sure you can wait for the next day. And that one flight could be the flight, well, sorry, not the two, the one flight could be the flight that you actually lose the drone or it can't return to you because the wind is too crazy. You know, it's one of those things. Monitor the behavior of the drone, check the direction, check the wind speed and the gust speed and just make a calculated decision uh, of when to go, where to go, and how long to fly for, and also be prepared for you know, the wind to, to be coming at you as you're trying to fly back. So be prepared for that and actually know how long it's gonna take and how the drone's gonna perform in those higher winds. That's basically everything you need to know. If you've got any other thoughts, anything else that could be helpful for my audience, leave a comment below and we can chat in the comment section. I'll chat to you in the next video though. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you soon. Peace. You think you're too far, but I'm where you are, you know. I said I ooh, won't leave your side. They left you bare, but I'm begging you still in my